The Solid South or Southern Bloc was the electoral voting bloc of the states of the Southern United States for issues that were regarded as particularly important to the interests of Democrats in the Southern states. The Southern Bloc existed especially between the end of Reconstruction in 1877 and the passage of the Civil Rights Act in 1964. During this period, the Democratic Party controlled state legislatures, most local and state officeholders in the South were Democrats, as were federal politicians elected from these states. Southern Democrats disenfranchised blacks in every state of the former Confederacy at the turn of the 20th century. This resulted essentially in a one-party system, in which a candidate's victory in Democratic primary elections was tantamount to election to the office itself. White primaries were another means that the Democrats used to consolidate their political power, excluding blacks from voting in primaries. The Solid South is a loose term referring to the states that made up the voting bloc at any point in time. The Southern region, as defined by U.S. Census, comprises 16 states plus Washington, D.C. Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Washington, D.C., West Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Texas. This definition of the southern region does not necessarily correspond precisely to the states in the definition of the Solid South. Maryland was rarely considered part of the Solid South, as was Missouri, although it is classified as a Midwestern state by the U.S. Census. A former slave state, it became dominated by Democrats. After the 1960s and passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, ensuring federal enforcement of registration and voting, African Americans in the region were able to register and vote, rejoining the political system for the first time since the turn of the 20th century. While nearly 6 million African Americans had left the region by then in the Great Migration to other areas of the country, most of those who remained became affiliated with the Democratic Party. Its national leaders had supported the civil rights movement. Around the same time, white conservatives began to shift to the Republican Party, which by 2000 attracted most of the white voters. African Americans have elected numerous candidates of their choice, generally Democrats, from districts where their votes have been concentrated. History At the start of the American Civil War, there were 34 states in the United States, 15 of which were slave states. Eleven of these slave states seceded from the United States to form the Confederacy, South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina. The slave states that stayed in the Union were Maryland, Missouri, Delaware, and Kentucky, and they were referred to as the border states. In 1861, West Virginia was created out of Virginia, and admitted in 1863 and considered a border state. By the time the Emancipation Proclamation was made in 1863 Tennessee was already in Union control. Accordingly the proclamation applied only to the ten remaining Confederate states. Several of the border states abolished slavery before the end of the Civil War. The District of Columbia in 1862, Maryland in 1864, Missouri in 1865, one of the Confederate states, Tennessee in 1865, and West Virginia in 1865. However, slavery persisted in Delaware, Kentucky, and ten of the eleven former Confederate states, until the Thirteenth Amendment to the United States Constitution abolished slavery throughout the United States on December 18, 1865. Abolition of slavery was a condition of the return of local rule in those states that had declared their secession. The Reconstruction era came to an end in 1877. Democratic dominance of the South originated in the struggle of white Southerners during and after Reconstruction to establish white supremacy and disenfranchise blacks. The U.S. government under the Republican Party had defeated the Confederacy, abolished slavery, and enfranchised blacks. In several states, black voters were a majority or close to it. Republicans supported by blacks controlled state governments in these states. Thus the Democratic Party became the vehicle for the white supremacist. Redeemers. The Ku Klux Klan, as well as other insurgent paramilitary groups such as the White League and Red Shirts from 1874, acted as the military arm of the Democratic Party to disrupt Republican organizing and intimidate and suppress black voters. By 1876, Redeemer Democrats had taken control of all the state governments in the South. 
From then until the 1960s, state and local government in the South was almost entirely monopolized by Democrats. The Democrats elected all but a handful of U.S. representatives and senators, and Democratic presidential candidates regularly swept the region, from 1880 through 1944, winning a cumulative total of 182 of 187 states. The Democrats reinforced the loyalty of white voters by emphasizing the suffering of the South during the war at the hands of Yankee invaders under Republican leadership, and the noble service of their white forefathers in the lost cause. This rhetoric was effective with many Southerners. However, this propaganda was totally ineffective in areas that had been loyal to the Union during the war, such as eastern Tennessee. Eastern Tennessee welcomed U.S. troops as liberators, and voted Republican after the war, even to the present. Even after white Democrats regained control of state legislatures, some blacks were elected to local offices and state legislatures in the South. Black U.S. representatives were elected from the South as late as the 1890s, usually from overwhelmingly black areas. Also in the 1890s, the populists developed a following in the South, among poor whites resentful of the Democratic Party establishment. Populists formed alliances with Republicans including blacks and challenged the Democratic bosses, even defeating them in some cases. To prevent such coalitions in the future and to end the violence associated with suppressing the black vote during elections, Southern Democrats acted to disfranchise both blacks and poor whites. From 1890 to 1910, beginning with Mississippi, southern states adopted new constitutions and other laws including various devices to restrict voter registration, disfranchising virtually all black and many poor white residents. These devices applied to all citizens, in practice they disfranchised most blacks and also would remove from voter registration rolls the less educated, less organized, more impoverished whites as well, and that would ensure one-party democratic rules through most of the 20th century in the South." All the southern states adopted provisions that restricted voter registration and suffrage, including new requirements for poll taxes, longer residency, and subjective literacy tests. Some also used the device of grandfather clauses, exempting voters who had a grandfather voting by a particular year usually before the Civil War, when blacks could not vote. White Democrats also opposed Republican economic policies such as the high tariff and the gold standard, both of which were seen as benefiting northern industrial interests at the expense of the agrarian South in the 19th century. Nevertheless, holding all political power was at the heart of their resistance. From 1876 through 1944, the National Democratic Party opposed any calls for civil rights for blacks. In Congress Southern Democrats blocked such efforts whenever Republicans targeted the issue. White Democrats passed Jim Crow laws which reinforced white supremacy through racial segregation. The 14th Amendment provided for apportionment of representation in Congress to be reduced if a state disenfranchised part of its population. However, this clause was never applied to southern states that disenfranchised blacks. No blacks were elected to any office in the South for decades after the turn of the century, and they were also excluded from juries and other participation in civil life. Democratic candidates won by large margins in the southern states in every presidential election from the election of 1876 to 1948, except for 1928, when the Democratic candidate was Al Smith, a Catholic New Yorker, and even in that election, the divided South provided Smith with nearly three fourths of his electoral votes. Scholar Richard Vallely credited Woodrow Wilson's 1912 election to the disfranchisement of blacks in the South, and also noted far-reaching effects in Congress, where the Democratic South gained about 25 extra seats in Congress for each decade between 1903 and 1953. In the Deep South South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas, Democratic dominance was overwhelming, with 80% to 90% of the vote, and only a tiny number of Republican state legislators or local officials. Mississippi and South Carolina were the most extreme cases, between 1900 and 1944, only in 1928 when the three subcoastal Mississippi counties of Pearl River, Stone and George went for Hoover did the Democrats lose a single one of these two states' counties in any presidential election. In the remaining states, the German-American Texas counties of Gillespie and Kendall, and a number of counties in Appalachian parts of Arkansas, Alabama and Georgia would vote Republican in presidential elections through this period. 
In the Upper South Tennessee, North Carolina, and Virginia, Republicans retained a significant presence mainly in these remote Appalachian regions which supported the Union during the Civil War, even winning occasional governorships and often drawing over 40% in presidential votes. By the 1920s, as memories of the Civil War faded, the Solid South cracked slightly. For instance, a Republican was elected U.S. Representative from Texas in 1920, serving until 1932. The Republican national landslides in 1920 and 1928 had some effects. In the 1920 elections, Tennessee elected a Republican governor, elected Republicans to five of the state's ten U.S. House seats and became the first former Confederate state to vote for the Republican candidate for U.S. president since Reconstruction. However, with the Democratic national landslide of 1932, the South again became solidly Democrat. In the 1930s, black voters outside the South largely switched to the Democrats, and other groups with an interest in civil rights notably Jews, Catholics, and academic intellectuals became more powerful in the party. This led to the National Democrats adopting a civil rights plank in 1948. A faction of Deep South Democrats bolted the party, and ran their own Dixiecrat presidential ticket, which carried four states, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Even before then, a number of conservative Southern Democrats felt chagrin at the National Party's growing friendliness to organized labor during the Franklin D. Roosevelt administration, and began splitting their tickets as early as the 1930s. Southern demography also began to change. From 1910 through 1970, about 6.5 million black Southerners moved to urban areas in other parts of the country in the Great Migration, and demographics began to change Southern states in other ways. Florida began to expand rapidly, with retirees and other migrants from other regions becoming a majority of the population. Many of these new residents brought their Republican voting habits with them, diluting traditional Southern hostility to the Republicans. The Republican Party began to make gains in the South, building on other cultural conflicts as well. By the mid-1960s, changes had come in many of the Southern states. Former Dixiecrat Senator Strom Thurmond of South Carolina changed parties in 1964, Texas elected a Republican senator in 1961, Florida and Arkansas elected Republican governors in 1966. In the Upper South, where Republicans had always been a small presence, Republicans gained a few House and Senate seats. Republican President Richard Nixon adopted a Southern strategy. For the presidential election of 1972, continue enforcement of the civil rights legislation of the 1960s, but be quiet about it, so that offended Southern whites would continue to blame the Democrats, while talking up the Democrats' increasing association with liberal views. He was aided by centrist Democrats' attacks on the eventual nominee as a radical. This strategy was wildly successful, Nixon carried every Southern state by huge margins. The South was still overwhelmingly Democratic at the state level, with majorities in all state legislatures, and most U.S. representatives as well. Over the next 30 years, this gradually changed. Veteran Democratic officeholders retired or died, and older voters who were still rigidly Democratic also died off. There were also increasing numbers of migrants from other areas, especially in Florida, Texas, and North Carolina. Via the Republican Revolution, in the 1994 elections, Republicans captured a majority of Southern House seats for the first time. Today, the South is considered a Republican stronghold at the state and federal levels, with Republicans holding majorities in every Southern state after the 2014 elections. Political experts have often cited a Southernization of politics following the fall of the Solid South. Oklahoma. Oklahoma was not a state during Reconstruction, being admitted to the Union only in 1907. Since that time, its voting patterns has been similar to those of other southern states, so it may be considered part of the Solid South. <laughs> West Virginia For West Virginia, "...reconstruction, in a sense, began in 1861." Unlike the other border states West Virginia did not send the majority of its soldiers to the Union. 
The prospect of those returning ex-Confederates prompted the Wheeling state government to implement laws that restricted their right of suffrage, practicing law and teaching, access to the legal system, and subjected them to war trespass lawsuits. The lifting of these restrictions in 1871 resulted in the election of John J. Jacob, a Democrat, to the governorship. It also led to the rejection of the wartime constitution by public vote and a new constitution written under the leadership of ex-Confederates such as Samuel Price, Alan T. Caperton and Charles James Faulkner. In 1876 the state Democratic ticket of eight candidates were all elected, seven of whom were Confederate veterans. For nearly a generation West Virginia was part of the Solid South, however, Republicans returned to power in 1896, controlling the governorship for eight of the next nine terms, and electing 82 of 106 U.S. representatives. In 1932, as the nation swung to the Democrats, West Virginia became solidly Democratic. It was perhaps the most reliably Democratic state in the nation between 1932 and 1996, being one of just two states along with Minnesota to vote Republican president as few as three times in that interval. Moreover, unlike Minnesota or other nearly as reliably Democratic states like Massachusetts and Rhode Island, it usually had a unanimous, or nearly unanimous congressional delegation and only elected two Republicans as governor albeit for a combined 20 years between them. West Virginia voters shifted toward the Republican Party from 1996 onward, as the Democratic Party became more strongly identified with environmental policies anathema to the state's coal industry and with socially liberal policies, and it can now be called a solidly red state. Presidential voting The 1896 presidential election resulted in the first break in the Solid South. Florida politician Marion L. Dawson, writing in the North American Review, observed, "...the victorious party not only held in line those states which are usually relied upon to give Republican majorities... More significant still, it invaded the Solid South, and bore off West Virginia, Maryland, and Kentucky, caused North Carolina to tremble in the balance and reduced Democratic majorities in the following states, Alabama, 39,000, Arkansas, 29,000, Florida, 6,000, Georgia, 49,000, Louisiana, 33,000, South Carolina, 6,000, and Texas, 29,000. These facts, taken together with the Great Landslide of 1894 and 1895, which swept Missouri and Tennessee, Maryland and Kentucky over into the country of the enemy, have caused Southern statesmen to seriously consider whether the so-called Solid South is not now a thing of past history." In 1904, Missouri supported Republican Theodore Roosevelt, while Maryland awarded its electors to Democrat Alton Parker, despite Roosevelt's winning by 51 votes. By the 1916 election, this franchisement of blacks and many poor whites was complete, and voter rolls had dropped dramatically in the South. Closing out Republican supporters gave a bump to Southerner Woodrow Wilson, who took all the electors across the South, as the Republican Party was stifled without support by African Americans. The 1920 election was a referendum on President Woodrow Wilson's League of Nations. Pro isolation sentiment in the South benefited Republican Warren G. Harding, who won Tennessee and Missouri. In 1924, Coolidge won Kentucky and Missouri. In 1928, Hoover, perhaps benefiting from bias against his Roman Catholic anti-prohibition opponent Al Smith, won not only Kentucky, Missouri, and Tennessee, but also Florida, North Carolina, Texas, and Virginia. Maryland changed to the Republicans in the 1920s and would not vote Democratic again until Franklin Delano Roosevelt's 1932 presidential landslide over Republican President Herbert Hoover. The South appeared. Solid. Again during the period of Franklin D. Roosevelt's political dominance, as his welfare programs and military buildup invested considerable money in the South, benefiting many of its citizens, including during the Dust Bowl. Democratic President Harry S. Truman's support of the civil rights movement, combined with the adoption of a civil rights plank in the 1948 Democratic platform, prompted many Southerners to walk out of the Democratic National Convention and form the Dixiecrat Party. This splinter party played a significant role in the 1948 election. The Dixiecrat candidate, Strom Thurmond, carried Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and South Carolina. 
In the elections of 1952 and 1956, the popular Republican Dwight D. Eisenhower, commander of the Allied Armed Forces during World War II, carried several southern states, with especially strong showings in the new suburbs. In 1956, Eisenhower also carried Louisiana, becoming the first Republican to win the state since Rutherford B. Hayes in 1876. The rest of the Deep South voted for his Democratic opponent, Adlai Stevenson. The 1948 election also marked Maryland's permanent defection from the Solid South as the expansion of the federal government led to a population explosion in the state that changed Maryland politically into a northeastern state. In the 1960 election, the Democratic nominee, John F. Kennedy, continued his party's tradition of selecting a Southerner as the vice presidential candidate in this case, Senator Lyndon B. Johnson of Texas. Kennedy and Johnson, however, both supported civil rights. In October 1960, when Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested at a peaceful sit-in in Atlanta, Georgia, Kennedy placed a sympathetic phone call to King's wife, Coretta Scott King, and Robert Kennedy helped secure King's release. King expressed his appreciation for these calls. Although King made no endorsement, his father, who had previously endorsed Republican Richard Nixon, switched his support to Kennedy. Because of these and other events, the Democrats lost ground with white voters in the South, as those same voters increasingly lost control over what was once a whites-only Democratic Party in much of the South. The 1960 election was the first in which a Republican presidential candidate received electoral votes in the South while losing nationally. Nixon carried Virginia, Tennessee, and Florida. Though the Democrats also won Alabama and Mississippi, slates of unpledged electors, representing Democratic segregationists, awarded those states' electoral votes to Harry Byrd, rather than Kennedy. The party's positions on civil rights continued to evolve in the run-up to the 1964 election. The Democratic candidate, Johnson, who had become president after Kennedy's assassination, spared no effort to win passage of a strong Civil Rights Act of 1964. After signing the landmark legislation, Johnson said to his aide, Bill Moyers, I think we just delivered the South to the Republican Party for a long time to come. In contrast, Johnson's Republican opponent, Senator Barry Goldwater of Arizona, voted against the Civil Rights Act, believing it enhanced the federal government and infringed on the private property rights of businessmen. Goldwater did support civil rights in general and universal suffrage, and voted for the 1957 and 1960 Civil Rights Acts as well as the 24th Amendment, which banned poll taxes as a requirement for voting. This was one of the devices that states used to disfranchise minorities and the poor. That November, Johnson won a landslide electoral victory, and the Republicans suffered significant losses in Congress. Goldwater, however, besides carrying his home state of Arizona, carried the Deep South. Voters in Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and South Carolina had switched parties for the first time since Reconstruction. Goldwater notably won only in southern states that had voted against Republican Richard Nixon in 1960, while not winning a single southern state which Nixon had carried, creating a complete inversion of the electoral pattern of the previous presidential election. Prior to the 1956 election, the region had almost always provided the only victories for Democratic challengers to popular Republican incumbent presidents. Now, however, the South had provided a Republican challenger with electoral victories against a popular Democratic incumbent. According to a quantitative analysis for the National Bureau of Economic Research, racism played a central role in the decline in relative white Southern Democratic identification. Topic: <laughs> Southern Strategy. End of Solid South. In the 1968 election, the Republican candidate, Richard Nixon, saw this trend and capitalized on it with his Southern strategy. His strategy was designed to appeal to white Southerners who were more conservative than the leaders of the National Democratic Party. As a result of the strategy and conservative Southerners' reactions against Democratic leaders, Hubert Humphrey was almost shut out in the South, carrying only Texas, with the rest of the South being divided between Nixon and the American Independent Party candidate George C. Wallace, the governor of Alabama, who had gained fame for opposing integration. Nationwide, Nixon won a decisive electoral college victory, although he received only a plurality of the popular vote. Nixon won the 1972 election in a landslide. 
At the 1976 election, Jimmy Carter, a Southern governor, gave Democrats a short-lived comeback in the South, winning every state in the old Confederacy except for Virginia, which was narrowly lost. However, in his unsuccessful 1980 re-election bid, the only Southern states he won were his native state of Georgia and West Virginia. The year 1976 was the last year a Democratic presidential candidate won a majority of Southern electoral votes. The Republicans took all the region's electoral votes in the 1984 election and every state except West Virginia in 1988. In the 1992 election and 1996, when the Democratic ticket consisted of two Southerners, Bill Clinton and Al Gore, the Democrats and Republicans split the region. In both elections, Clinton won Arkansas, Louisiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and West Virginia, while the Republican won Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Bill Clinton won Georgia in 1992, but lost it in 1996 to Bob Dole. Conversely, Clinton lost Florida in 1992 to George Bush, but won it in 1996. In 2000, however, Gore received no electoral votes from the South, even from his home state of Tennessee. The popular vote in Florida was extraordinarily close in awarding the state's electoral votes to George W. Bush. This pattern continued in the 2004 election. The Democratic ticket of John Kerry and John Edwards received no electoral votes from the South, even though Edwards was from North Carolina, and was born in South Carolina. However, in the 2008 election, Barack Obama won the former Republican strongholds of Virginia and North Carolina as well as Florida. Obama won Virginia and Florida again in 2012 and lost North Carolina by only 2.04%. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won only Virginia while narrowly losing Florida and North Carolina. While the South was shifting from the Democrats to the Republicans, the Northeastern United States went the other way. The Northeastern United States is defined by the U.S. Census Bureau as Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and the New England states although politically the Northeast also includes Maryland and Delaware. Well into the 1980s, the Northeast was a bastion of the Republican Party. The Democratic Party made steady gains there, however, and in 1992, 1996, 2004, 2008 and 2012 all 11 northeastern states, from Maryland to Maine, voted for the Democrats. The same trend can be observed on the West Coast and Upper Midwest excluding the Dakotas and including Illinois and Iowa of the nation, as they shifted from solidly Republican and swing states, respectively, to a change in political party strength. Southern strategy today Although Republicans gradually began doing better in presidential elections in the South starting in 1952, Republicans did not finish taking over Southern politics at the non-presidential level until the elections of November 2010. Today, the South is dominated by Republicans at both the state and presidential level. Republicans control all 22 of the other legislative bodies in the former Confederacy, and all but one in a border state. Until the election of Doug Jones to the Senate from Alabama in 2017, there were no white Democratic congressmen from the Deep South. Until November 2010, Democrats had a majority in the Alabama, North Carolina, Mississippi, Arkansas and Louisiana legislatures, a majority in the Kentucky House of Representatives and Virginia Senate, a near majority of the Tennessee House of Representatives, and a majority of the U.S. House delegations from Arkansas, North Carolina, Mississippi, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia, as well as near even splits of the Georgia and Alabama U.S. House delegations. However, during the 2010 midterm elections, Republicans swept the South, successfully re-electing every Senate incumbent, electing freshman Marco Rubio in Florida and Rand Paul in Kentucky, and defeating Democratic incumbent Blanche Lincoln in Arkansas for a seat now held by John Boozman. In the House, Republicans re-elected every incumbent except for Joseph Sow of New Orleans and defeated several Democratic incumbents. Republicans are now the majority in the congressional delegations of every southern state. Every solid South state, with the exceptions of Arkansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, and West Virginia, also elected or re-elected Republicans' governors. Most significantly, Republicans took control of both houses of the Alabama and North Carolina state legislatures for the first time since Reconstruction, with Mississippi and Louisiana flipping a year later during their off-year elections. <laughs> 
Even in Arkansas, the GOP won three of six statewide down ballot positions for which they had often not fielded candidates until recently. They also went from 8 to 15 out of 35 seats in the state Senate and from 28 to 45 out of 100 in the state House of Representatives. In 2012, the Republicans finally took control of the Arkansas State Legislature and the North Carolina governorship, leaving West Virginia as the last solid South state with the Democrats still in control of the state legislature, as well as the governorship. In 2014, though, both houses of the West Virginia legislature were finally taken by the GOP, and most other legislative chambers in the South up for election that year saw increased GOP gains. Arkansas's governorship finally flipped GOP in 2014 when the incumbent termed out, as did every other statewide office not previously held by the Republicans. Many analysts believe the so-called Southern strategy that has been employed by Republicans since the 1960s is now virtually complete, with Republicans in firm, almost total, control of political offices in the South. The biggest exception to this trend has been the state of Virginia. It got an earlier start in the trend towards the Republican Party than the rest of the region. It voted Republican for president in 11 of the 12 elections between 1952 and 1996, while no other southern state did so more than nine times that state, Florida, is the other potential exception to the trend, but to a significantly lesser extent. Moreover, it had a Republican governor more often than not between 1970 and 2002, and Republicans held at least half the seats in the Virginia congressional delegation from 1968 to 1990 although the Democrats had a narrow minority throughout the 1990s, while with single-term exceptions Alabama from 1965 to 1967, Tennessee from 1973 to 1975, and South Carolina from 1981 to 1983 and the exception of Florida which which had its delegation turn majority Republican in 1989 Democrats held at least half the seats in the delegations of the rest of the southern states until the Republican Revolution of 1994. However, thanks in large part to massive population growth in Northern Virginia and the orientation of that population with the political ideologies of the solidly Democratic Northeast, the Democratic Party has won nearly every major statewide race since 2005, with the single exception being the governor's race in 2009. Topic. Solid South in presidential elections While Republicans occasionally won Southern states in elections in which they won the presidency in the Solid South, it was not until 1960 that a Republican carried one of these states while losing the national election. Keybold denotes candidates elected as president. South in gubernatorial elections Officials who acted as governor for less than 90 days are excluded from this chart. This chart is intended to be a visual exposition of party strength in the Solid South and the dates listed are not exactly precise. Governors not elected in their own right are listed in italics. The parties are as follows, Democratic D, Farmers Alliance FA, Prohibition P, Readjuster RA, Republican R. See also Bible Belt Tantamount to Election Yellow Dog Democrat